Excuse me. Is that a problem for you? Excuse me. Yeah, ex Would that's exactly a right. Bit nicer about it and a little bit nicer. You, you make this big Since sigh. I'm just trying to get by. Well, as I'm sitting here and you could enter the other way. Could you just please? move your legs? What are you doing? Are you looking at my breast? You're looking at my breast. I'm not you looking at your looking breast. At I'm breast. trying you to get to my seat. My... He's looking at my breast. Yeah, yeah, you, you and your special breast. breast. Just excuse me, please. Please just go by yeah. without stepping on my foot. Right. You wear that dress because you want people to look at your shoes, right? Is that it? Prick. Hi, I'm Jeff Garland. I'm Susie Essman. We are now going to do season one, episode one, which is the first time the theme song was played. Was played. Yes, it was not played in the hour pilot. And it was missed. You hear that dun, 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 and you immediately get into the head I of the show. I have to tell you myself, I was in love with it from the second I heard it. So, you know, maybe we could just quickly tell the story of how Larry found it. Yeah. A few years prior to this, he heard it. It was like a, it's called Frolic, written by an Italian composer. And he heard it, it was on some bank commercial bank or commercial, something. commercial, yes. And he said to Laura, who was his assistant at the time, currently yeah. our EP, yeah. find me that song. And she did, she yeah. tracked it down, and yeah. then he chose to use it. And this is prior to... Even thinking about doing it. Well, no, her. no, the internet existed at this time, uh -huh. but it was not what it is now. So there's still quite a bit of work in finding something like that. Really, a bank commercial and the song Frolic. Now you put those two things in a search in a comes Google, yeah. and it probably comes up. Might not. Like in if you put in Pirates of the Caribbean and Lotion, what would come up? Copper Tone. I, by the way, you're close, yeah. So this first episode is called The Pants Tent. Yes. What I noticed is there is some interstitial music, but not as much as there came to and, be. And only one of them do we continue to use. It's the one that you do. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. yeah. Which is that my favorite. That was the first one. And this is 2000 that we shot this, I believe. Yes. I believe it was the it winter was. Yeah. of 2000. Yes. And it's called The Pants Tent. And, you know, right up front, this is such a typical Larry, uh -huh. the pants tent. You know, that's such a typical thing that he would notice. And it's about his pants that are just too... Well, no, everyone notices. Every guy who's ever wore a pair of khakis, especially with pleats. Yeah. There's, there's a, it goes up and I know comedically, I've always thought if I sit down, someone's going to think I have an erection. See, now, that never would have occurred to and me. And I guarantee somebody's done that in their stand-up and it didn't work. Just my gut feeling, could be because it's not that funny unless you're watching it. Yeah, well, it's a it's a visual. Yeah, it's a, vis it's a By visual. By the way, it only works as a visual, and yeah, so Larry took it to a visual place. And this is the first episode I'm in. We'll get to you when we get to you. Yeah, okay. Uh, don't rush. I'm not rushing. We're here. We're gonna get to you. So I want to talk about the pants tent thing, which okay. is okay. This is one of those things that we've done a million times, which is the minutia. Right. Larry likes noticing the minutia and then taking it in a place where you don't expect. So when you see him playing with his pants at the beginning, you don't have a clue of what, I bet this, I bet that. No, you can't bet. You don't know. Yeah, Cheryl's friend, you know, is going to rub his arm. And also, by the way, early on, we see Larry's first annoying face. And that is when Cheryl hands him the phone. He's bewildered and annoyed. Cheryl won't oh, go to the yeah. movies. She, but, his, his, but, her, her girlfriend, girlfriend is on the phone. Go. Robin... Uh, 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 Roizen. Roseanne. 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 Yeah. Yes. Who was at the time married to Mike Myers, but I don't yeah. think anymore. Well, I've known her. No, she's not. She's actually a lot. I wrote her down other places just to mention her, but we already did. Yeah. And she's lovely. And uh, she was great. She great was great. in this episode. Yeah. So when she hands him the phone, I'm watching and feeling the frustration and the embarrassment of which grows later. What he is, he's like upping the ante. So at this point, he's pissed he has to go with her. What does he say to her? And then he's meeting her at the uh, movie theater. Which I find, by the way, a little bizarre. Why, that she's meeting him there? Well, no, I would never say to my husband, go with my girlfriend to the movies. Well, yes. I I'm trying to think if my wife of your ever said that to me. And I think my wife of your always felt better. When I was attending something with someone 
that's part of her well, circle. Well, because it's accountability. That, but that could also be a man or a woman. Right. And she would be joyful. Like if I was going to Chicago, where I'm from, the more time I spent with her family, the happier she was, even though she didn't say anything otherwise. So, so I think this is not that unusual for a wife to say her best friend with Larry, she knows nothing's going on. Well, yeah, know? I know. Okay. I know, but to volunteer him that way. But then there, there's the storyline, so okay. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second, <laughs> let's take a step back from that. There is the storyline, but whatever. <laughs> One of my problems with being involved in other projects is they're never truthful to the truth. They never do things in a realistic form. And I'll talk about it with them or examine that, and they'll tell me I'm thinking too much. I've gotten that on many sitcoms. Don't logic me up. I've actually gotten that phrase said to me. Now, you want to nitpick this and that. He wouldn't turn his head in that direction. And by the way, on Curb, we even say those things about the way someone looks at someone. But people would get angry at me when I would do that. And so on this show, you said you wouldn't, but I think someone might do that. It wasn't completely uh, out of, you know, the realm of possibility. It just struck no, me. No, it was closer than the realm. Don't realm me on it this. It struck me as realm odd the, that okay. she would do that, but oh, it's by fine. I accept that. It struck you as odd, but don't go to realms. All right, let's keep going. And the other thing that's set up in this episode is Larry's issues with Lewis's girlfriends, which happens a lot. Well, yeah, this was the first one. The first one. Sophia Milos, who, by the way, uh, I had seen her on The Sopranos. Beautiful was, girl. Beautiful girl. She was perfect for the role. Right. Because she was angry, yet beautiful. We used her a couple of times, two or three times, because she was a, a great foil for Larry, mm-hmm. as well as um, But he's but correct in that there, there seems to always be issues with Lewis's girlfriend. Which is always, always funny. Yes, always hilarious. Always funny. Now, I want to say, the first scene after that, when he's driving in his car to the movies, is the first time I'm introduced in the series. I'm on the you're on the phone on the speaker phone right. and which we're is talking. a huge faux pas, by the way, to not tell somebody that they're uh, on speaker. By the way, huge. who would and I'm not talking Jeff Garland because I would never do that, but Jeff Green, yeah, clueless, clueless. clueless. Of course, he's going to do that, and that's not out of the realm. That is big bowl of in the realm. Yeah. That's a target of him being an idiot. And as soon as Larry says, "I'll check with Hitler" or something, you know. Hitler, he's referring to his wife, his wife as being, Cheryl. yeah. But basically what happens is he calls me, we're talking, and then he asks me a question. He says, I'll ask, I have to ask permission of Hitler, which is an extreme. And I hate when Jews do the extreme. He did it for the joke, but people do it. I don't think Larry David would ever use that reference. Uh, but he said, and then the characters played by Louis Nye and Mina Kolb, which I'll get into yeah. in a minute. Hitler, Hitler, you know, they're, they're screaming because they're in the car and he's very upset. Right. Very upset, which ultimately ends up getting him in a lot more, uh, you well, know. Well, the, the entire episode is about him apologizing nonstop to everybody, which many episodes are. Okay. So now comes the first funny thing. And this is not something, if we played a clip we could not, this would not be funny because you wouldn't hear it. But the movie theater where he's at says the name of the movie. It is pre-digital expertise. In other words, it looks like someone put, what are those tape things you use to? Yeah, the tape guns. The label makers. Label makers. It looks like someone digitally put a label maker in the thing outside to say what was playing with the flashing lights yeah. and the thing. It looks so bad. I see. I didn't I, even you, notice it. Oh, I burst out laughing. Uh-huh. It was horrible. Horrible. What was it? I don't remember the name okay. of the movie. He saw a specific name right. of the movie, and it just, it looked horrible. All I want to say is, you know, if that happened nowadays, I couldn't watch the rest of the episode. I'd be obsessed. But because our expectations just completely change as technology. Well, yeah, because it's solid you know, as it's a like rock when, now. Like when, we used to, when they used to watch old kinescopes, it seemed normal to them. Right. I love old kinescopes. Did you know the third year of Curb? You might not have known this. All kinescopes. Yeah. We went for a time machine. So, By the way, the pauses are, uh, we got notes. Uh, I have ADHD. Well, what do you have? What's your excuse for using notes? I, I am old. She's old. 
I'm old and I have ADHD. Therefore, we watch these. We have to make well, notes. Well, we have to make notes. There's a hundred and uh, but right now it's 111 episodes. There are episodes. people who have a skill set that can do that. Yeah. By the way, young Jeff, I'm like 20s. I could have remembered every beat of the episode and every thought I had. Really? Now at 60, don't have a fucking clue. All right, let's see here. So, uh, so the thing to me that was, I mean, and I definitely want to get to your parents. And you were because, right, by the way, in terms of Larry and his uncomfort with all of Richard's girlfriends, and it creates so many problems. But you know what else stood out to me? How handsome was Richard Lewis? Yeah, I know. He I noticed so that too. Damn, I and that luxurious that hair. Yeah, I thought, oh, boy. and that guy was playing Carnegie Hall, big comedian. I thought, wow, he had to have lived a life. I know a little more than he wanted to, vis-a-vis -vis, you know uh, alcohol and drug abuse. Well, he actually. Uh, and by the way, I say that with full permission. But by the way, you could say to him when we weren't rolling at any time, and I love to do this. Hey, Richard, how long you been sober? He could tell you to the day. Oh, he says the two things Richard likes to say all the time is that he's been sober for X number of years. I don't know what it is. And that he sold out Carnegie Hall in 1989. By the way, he do, that, those are two of the big ones. And by the way, those what's are two great, things he hold mentions on, a lot. this is what's beautiful also. <laughs> I can pretend like I didn't know that information, even though he's told it to me one-on-one, -on -one, a minimum of a dozen times, I can go in the same conversation. Wait, did you ever play Carnegie Hall? And he'll tell you, and he'll tell you the date, well, sold it out. he's very and proud of that for I good know, reason. I know, very much so. I'm never playing Carnegie Hall unless I'm, this show becomes popular and you and I are sitting on a stage together. And then the other um, thing, same conversation, I'll go, you're sober, right? How, how long? Like, And he would do it all the time, and I loved it. And he's very proud of that because he worked very hard at it. Well, both of them, yes. Yeah, I'm not the, making fun of him, but I'm making the, fun of him. The other, the, the, the part where, so Larry is, you know, trying to get through the aisle and he passes, what was her name? Sophia? What was her Milos. name? Milos. Sophia. He passes Sophia, uh, who's Richard's girlfriend, who won't move her legs. And she very angrily accuses him of looking at her breasts. And do you know what he replies? Excuse me. Is that a problem for you? Excuse me. Yeah, ex Would that's exactly right. A little right. bit nicer about it? And just a little go bit nicer. By? You, you make this big Since sigh. I'm just trying to get by. Well, as I'm sitting here and you could enter the other way. Could you just please? move your legs? What are you doing? Are you looking at my breast? You're looking at my breast. I'm not you looking at your looking breast. At I'm trying to get to my seat. My, he's looking at my breast. Yeah, yeah, you, you and your special breast. breast. Just excuse me, please. Please, please. Just go by without yeah. stepping on my foot. Right. You wear that dress because you want people to look at your shoes, right? Is that it? Prick. What's always funny is the discovery with Larry, because he uh, he has before and since done these things where he's done something bad to Richard's and, girlfriend. And then realized, not knowing, not knowing yeah, it's his, his girlfriend. girlfriend. He likes her a lot. Anyhow, um, what was amazing to me, which we would never do now, and this is not even of its time, we allowed the flashing lights of the sign above to be going in every direction. So it's like watching people in a disco at night having a conversation with all the flashing nights and the, the disco ball would be right above them. It was so distracting and unsettling. Well, I think stylistically the show was just finding itself. This was the oh, first Oh, by the episode. way, I agree. But still, I look back and I go, wow, that sucked. Yeah. Yeah. And also the technology's changed. Uh, well, 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 what technology could we do to stop flashing lights? Turn them off. Right. Uh, now we have switches. <laughs> but by the way, what did they have back then? You had to crank them off? <laughs> you know, all right, go ahead. All right, so that, there's that whole interaction at the at the, the theater, and then he's upset because he has this fight with this woman who he doesn't know who she is, who we find right. out later is Lewis's girlfriend. And Cheryl's friend, Nancy, to calm Larry down, starts just gently rubbing his Yeah, but arm. they're not even outside then. My mistake for jumping. Yeah, they're, they're so sitting Larry, in the theater. So Larry, after he passes her with his popcorn, he sits down next to her. He complains about it. She can see he's upset, rubs his arm. And by the way, may I add, a eh, little extra rubbing there. little extra rubbing? Yeah. You I, thought I, so? I didn't think, because a couple of pats, that's pleasant. Eh, she went for, I'm trying to give you an erection. Let's make out now before the now, show. Now, do men get erections from rubbing their arm? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. Those who are lucky enough surely do. Larry did not get an erection, but she assumed that he did because his the pants, pants tent, tent Which leads to something up. insane that we'll talk about shortly. Go ahead. 
No, it, it'll come okay. when it comes. And all of that goes down. And But he did not He did not have an erection. Of course not. She yeah. just assumed so. Okay, so if you're going out to a movie with a friend of your wife's or a female friend of yourself that is not romantic and you're involved with somebody else and someone rubs your arm even in a, a sexual way more than, let's say, a half a dozen times, you'd either say something or force your brain to not get an erection because you can, you can force it down. Like, nope, this is not, you don't want to insult her. You have her. tremendous it, control. No, by the way, I'm not saying it's a, um, a date and you're single and they're single. Right. No, then it's a situation. This yeah, is, he's out with his wife's close friend. to your wife or it's a friend of yours, you know, you'd go, I'm not going to get involved in this, but you know, so he, so when I said definitely didn't have an erection, by the way, of those of you listening to the show, I'm going off on a lot of tangents, and I want to apologize. We'll see where that goes. It may be part of the show. I don't know. But as of now, a lot of tangents so far. We'll see. Keep going. So that so that, that's all done. They go outside. He sees Lewis. He finds out that this woman is Lewis's girlfriend. They're supposed right. to have dinner right. the, the following weekend. He's like, I'm not having dinner with them. Right. No way. Well, he, that's when the next scene he goes home and says to Cheryl, we're supposed to have dinner but that's not happening. That's not happening. And he tells Cheryl her, the pants tense about he he very smartly tells Cheryl that her friend Nancy thought he had an erection. Well, by the way, you have to do that. But he did. He neglected to tell her that she was rubbing his arm. Right. Which is he an did. important and thing by the to way, left out. I'm jumping ahead. But the next episode, which is about episode two, I have something to say about that. The explaining. Yes. OK. All right. I know where you're going with I know. that. The whole episode is about apologies. And then comes back the whole issue with your parents and him saying sorry on the machine. Right. And Cheryl wanting to know why he why he said he was sorry. And that's, again, he's digging a hole, digging a hole, digging right. a hole. Well, I, I, there were three things that pile up, and they're all of his own doing. Now, a lot of times on the show, my character is responsible for him digging a hole because he gives him advice. But also, when he tries to help me with you, a stickler I'm in, everything Even everyone worse. does on this show that is not Larry or I, it has no effect on them, whatever they do. If Larry or I are involved, and obviously together, it's digging bigger holes after bigger holes. Basically, I'm attached to Larry's trouble 90% of the time. And 90% of the time that you're in trouble with e either me or Cheryl. Yes, yes, yes. Obviously more so me with you. Although I think yeah, he's you with split me it up. Yeah. I'm saying you split it up nicely. You know, early on, as we talked about in the first episode, Cheryl and I, she didn't like me. I was trying to work through that, my client's wife, you know, but she did not like me. The character I'm talking about. Cheryl Hines loved me from the get-go. And I say that in a gentle voice. Now, was there a discussion when you started doing the series that you're going to change that dynamic? Yeah, no, Larry made that decision as he was writing the episode. So he made that, and that was a conscious decision. Conscious decision. And HBO, that was one of the only notes right, they had. Right. We, we, we liked the that. conflict. Right. He says, I don't want to do that. Right. And by the way, I don't know if this was the last season of it or the, la or the second season was. This season, he had not finished all the outlines when the season started. Uh -huh. So it was a lot of work for him to go back to the office when we weren't shooting and write the outlines. See, now when we go to work, as you know, before done. we even show up, we've read all 10 episodes and they change very little. But you and Cheryl in in the show, Jeff Green and Cheryl right. David, I, I don't rem that, remember that there's any time that you're ever really close. There's just not conflict. No, but we're very copacetic. Yeah, yeah you're fine. And, and, and but uh, yeah, we're, I, I mean, I think that we even get to a point where she just accepts me like Larry's arm. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, because this is going to be are... here. I have no problems with it. But even then, I think she got mad at me maybe once during the season or twice. She's kicked me out of the house before. I remember well, for yeah, what. Well, yeah, I, I remember what well, it was for. Well, I'll discover when we watch. Yeah, I remember what it was And let for. me also add this. I watch these with my girlfriend, Sari, and it's fun to see it through her Somebody eye. else's eyes, yeah. yeah she I does agree. talk too much when we watch things. But other than that, Fun to watch it through her eyes. It is because I have to pause a lot because of her, so I'm not really just absorbing. But I pause a lot because I want to write something down. But bonus for her. 
All right. So it's mistake after mistake, alienation one after the other, the Hitler thing. Uh, Lewis confronts him. But Saturday night at dinner, can we maybe, maybe try to have an apology for me? First of all, there's no way I can have dinner with you on Saturday night. That's how. Hold on. Am I hearing this? I'm not at dinner. You know, our relationship's at stake dinner. right now. Huh? Our relationship's at stake. Get out of here. You better call me later on. By, by, by sundown. By sundown? You what, know, are you, what are you, Gary saying? Cooper? By sundown? What's going yeah? on? Oh, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> you know, I'm trying not to laugh, but that's yeah. funny. Okay. You better call me by sundown. I'm, by sundown? Is there a posse going to come get me? That's right. Mm. He comes up with shit. And then Larry has to come to our house to apologize to your parents for the Hitler thing. But in, in the interim, he has left a message saying he's he's sorry, and so he has a conflict with Cheryl. So so it's all very, you know, very inter, right. interwoven. Yes. So let's talk about Louis and Mina. No, let's talk about what happens before Louis and Mina. That's more important. What are you talking about? Larry walks in the house. What's the first thing he sees? I don't know. You. Oh, me. Yes. The first thing okay. he sees is me. You wanted to skip your introduction <laughs> well, into the right. show. What are you smoking? Yes. When, so, so, and the fact you were lost on it is a bonus. Well, I me. don't remember. You know what? You are old. I am old. But we just um, watched it. Okay. okay. So, yes, he does see me. He does yes. see me. And it, what's interesting is that house we rented, that was a house up in the Hollywood Hills, if you recall. Yes, we were there for a number of seasons. Well, I think only two. I think they had to leave after the second season. Was because, it second? Because it was, the, the parking was too difficult up no, there no, for the uh, trucks. No, no, getting up through the hills was yeah, too difficult. Yeah, with the trucks. By the way, the fact we chose that initially, I don't Doesn't know who chose that. It makes well, no sense. I like that house a lot. We had a completely different group that was producing and all, yeah, all of that yes, at that yes. time. Sandy Chanley. Yes. And I said, and, like, I said, like, I'm introducing her on a variety show. Sandy Chanley. And there was the blonde and Tom guy. Tom Bull. Yeah. And, and, the, and uh, uh, yeah, what's, what's his name? You know who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. I literally call him the blonde guy. I repeated his name last night. I go, I remember to talk. Um, All good eggs, by the way. Yeah. And I, I don't know the, the machinations of why. Can I be honest with you? In my entire life, I'm 60 years old, I've never used the word machinations. Really? Wow. Never. Maybe you will now. M could be. More likely, I'll say that. So I knew the word, but never used it. What happened was, Yeah. did you guys audition people for that role? No. You had an audition. No, I can tell you. Role. You tell what you know, and I'll tell what I well, know. Well, what I know is but one day- But we did not audition anyone. Anyone. Okay. Okay. Um, what I recall was I was sitting at home in my apartment on 78th street. Remember that apartment across Most from certainly. stand up New York. Right. And the phone rang and it was Larry. He's like, Susie, hi, it's LD. I had not heard from him for 10 years. He had moved to LA to do Seinfeld. And I, I love the way he just says LD as if, you yeah, know, so, hey, Larry, how you doing? But right? I did know yeah, who it was. Of course, I know. And but I, uh, I had never moved to LA. I had stayed in New York. I was living in New right. York and I hadn't seen him in all these years. And he said, oh, I have this part for you I want you to do. It's a new TV show. And I said, well, what's the part? Don't worry about it. You can do it. And I said, well, send me a script. There's no script. And then he said, there's no money. You have to do it for day scale and you have to fly yourself out and put yourself up. And I was like, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I would, would die to work with him. I loved him. You know, yeah. I always was such a big fan of his. I said, but I'm not going to have it cost me money. You want me to do it for day scale? Fine. And I was just a guest star. It was nothing... So whatever. Eventually, somebody came up with some money. They put me up at some crappy hotel in Venice, uh -huh. some shithole. And I think they flew me out coach or whatever. Of course they flew out coach. I would wager. But although I think it's against union rules to yes, do that. Yes, but I think they still but flew But I think they coach. flew me out coach. And the reason why Larry had called me for the part was he had a later episode, which we'll get to, called The Wire, which is later on in the season, where I have to be uh, a little angry and me, say. it set the tone. Yes, a little angry. Two scenes set the tone. Yeah. And this he, one, and then the, the I'll, when we get to that yeah, episode. Yeah, this one I wasn't angry at all. Th no, 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 I meant, yeah. I meant the one coming up this season. Yes. And then one from, is it season two That's or three? season two. The okay. doll is season yeah, two. Okay. So he had seen me do, I did it in 1999, a roast of Jerry Stiller. Right. On Comedy Central. Right. And, you know, roasts, you have to be very blue. It's what they are. Yeah. And so he just saw that I had a facility with a certain language, which yes. is what he had in mind. And I don't really, you know, we'll, we'll ask him when he comes on the show exactly what it was that he was thinking. But I think a light bulb moment just went off. And then he came to you. Yeah. And he just said, what would you think about Susie Essman for your wife? And I completely lit up. I go, can we do that? How can we do that? He goes, yeah, let's, let's do it. And the character's name was Marla. 
uh-huh. to begin with. Yes, which based because on that my was your wife. Wife of your. Um, so I mean, that was how it all started. I don't and, remember and, you being named Marla. That's yes. funny. And I was at a point in my career. This is nineteen. I guess he called me in nineteen ninety nine. Well, by the way. You were primarily known in this point in your career. As a stand-up. Yeah, but you were primarily known as one of those gals from Women of the Night. But I just want to go back to, to yeah. uh, the thing. So so he offered me the job. And at that point, I was in a very frustrated place in my career. Because I, I had been doing stand-up for about 16 years and was really good and nothing was happening. Even if you have the talent, even if you're funny as hell, there's still so much adversity. I remember sitting on the steps of Second City with Bob Odenkirk, okay? And we're both sitting there having had so much adversity, people ignoring us, and we really were miffed. We said, I think you're funny. He'd say to me, I think you're funny. What the fuck is going on? Why doesn't anyone notice us? I, I'll never forget that. It's vivid to yeah. me now. But that's part of being a young comedian. I wasn't even that young at this point. I was like 45. By, by I thought the time you were 62. It, yeah. Okay. But I think that just a point I want to make about that is he saw me on that roast of Jerry Stiller. Right. And Comedy Central didn't want me on that roast. The Friars Club had put me, they said they wanted me on that roast. And Comedy Central nixed me because I was whatever too old, too Jewish, too female for whatever reason they didn't want me. And the Friars Club fought for me to be on that roast because I had done so much stuff for them gratis and proved myself because that was always my thing about my career. You just keep showing up, showing up, you do good work and you just focus on that. You don't focus on what no, am I just getting do what and what and everybody else thing. is getting yes. and just do your thing and you do your compare. thing. And that's Although what I always did. That. Well, we all, well, we're yeah. human. Yeah. And that's what I always did. And and they fought for me to be on that roast. And Comedy Central, I think, thought, okay, well, let her be on the roast. And they paid what was then a decent amount. I think it was like 5000 And they'll 000. cut you out? Is that your yeah, thing? And they were going to cut me out. Yeah. Well, I killed you know, and those yeah, roasts are yeah. hard. But, well, and those the way, rooms first, are hard. The, the roasts are hard. Unless someone's an idiot, I would be horrible on a roast. I mean, I well, have you're been. Not, you're I was not on a the Bob writer. Saget roast, and I was terrible. Oh, oh, my God, terrible. Makes me sad. I know, Bob. Yeah, that kills me, too. Uh, roasters uh, are a specific yes, ability. Yes. And it's not the way that I do my stand-up, because no, I'm not jokey. No. But I worked it, and I made it jokey, because I knew that's what... And you're in a horrible room with the high ceiling, the high ballroom terrible. ceiling. But God so anyway, bless the Friars Club, because without the Friars Club, we wouldn't be having this conversation that's right, right now. That's and you right. know what? I was going to pull out of my membership today. Because I've had it with them. Well, they're a completely different thing. No, now. no, I am, I, I'm yeah. a proud member of the president, but they're closed right now. They're not. They're, it's a whole different thing. Oh, now. so they're not going to open? I don't know, but it's not what it used to be. Well, everything's not what it used to no, be. No, but I mean, I this like is, a good buffet on a, on a on a Sunday morning. I don't even know if they do that anymore. And basically, what she's saying is, you, the listener, who we have to respect, would not be interested in what's going down at the Friars Club. Myself, Jeff Garland, a member of the Friars Club, a comedian. Looking back on Milton Berle, et cetera. Boy, wow, that oh was, it was a tremendous tradition, an amazing yeah. tradition. Well, and the roast, you know, the Phyllis Diller dressed up as a man with a beard and a suit, and she snuck into a friar's roast because women were not allowed in friar's roasts. Would, the water's blocking the camera. Was it blocking me? Was it below my neck? I want this all included, by the way. I always want this stuff included. Keep the whole fucker in. I want people to feel the whole adventure that I'm feeling. It was very important to get the picture out from because it was blocking part of my chin. Actually, I don't I need that Here, anyway. I'll give that to you. But anyhow, I thought, why not put the the uh, picture in front of me and tell them where they can buy it? It's a great, by the way, I totally dig that picture. It's a beautiful picture. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, Larry gives me the job. He offers me the job. Finally, yeah. they come up with the $10 to fly me out and put yes. me up. Yes. And, and this was, I remember thinking, really? Because it was right after he did the Seinfeld syndication deal. Right. <laughs> yeah. The that's, first that's, one, that's, I but know. But that's not his money regardless. You know right. what I mean? It, nobody, a producer or a, a, an actor doesn't say, I'll pay for it. That never happens. Well, rarely. by the way, no, that would happen. Yeah. Would. By the way, Larry David now, if he wanted somebody as bad as you, he would say, I'll pay for it. At that time, I don't think he would have. He didn't know better. Nobody he knew. He it didn't was, think, yes. It was such a slapdash operation in the beginning. We had no trailers, for example. Oh, this we is had a no- good one. Hold on, hold on. Forget the for example. Now, normally you have 
uh, at worst, when you're primary on the show, a triple banger, which means there's, what three, that is. there's one trailer with three dressing like rooms. Like cubbies. In. Yeah, no, no, they're more than cubbies because then you've got four. The ones with four in a row are usually for people who have one line. And they don't have their own oh, bathroom. And then their, uh, most of them don't have their own bathroom. Yeah. Then the triple banger is smaller rooms, but it is a room. You could take a nap And you in have there. a bathroom. And you have a bathroom. Right. And then there's a double banger. And then there's the star trailer. And then I work with Eddie Murphy on Daddy Daycare. He actually had four trailers connected, like, to make a diamond. Oh, he had a fucking house. Basically, yeah. one was filled with exercise equipment. One was filled with Danish right. pastries. I'm kidding. That's if I had that trailer. Um, but anyhow, we, i.e., the cast of Curb Your Enthusiasm, Susie, myself, Cheryl, was there anyone else who's a regular? Well, if Richard, Richard was on, if Ted was on, we shared. No, no, not, oh, no, not the first season. There was no trailer. No, no, but wait, but you're not hearing what? Let me. There wasn't even a makeup uh, or hair trailer. There was no makeup and hair trailer? No. Oh, there I'm weren't even courtesans. Wait a minute, hold this here. So, the, you're taking me back, and I because I'm I'm thinking obviously of where we were season two, right? With season one, we just sat in directors' we, we'd chairs. We'd find a room somewhere and change, and really? we'd be doing our hair and makeup. I, by the way, I'm remembering this, but I I forgot all about it. Was it was so we had nothing. So and, that was that. You talk about slapdash. Yeah, it was really yeah. low budget. We yeah. had nothing. Yeah. Now, I remember Except there wasn't no even Porta Sands. The house that our our characters lived yeah, in. Yeah, because it was space. But we had a, a whole separate building. We had a room. Yeah, yeah a big room with, yeah. with cl- a big bathroom. No wonder I liked that. That's right. Because even... Okay, go ahead. So, yeah, so, we ha- so I just want to point... That it was really low budget. It was really low budget. And like, you know, all those... Believe me, all those girls on Sex in the City all had their own trailer and they had a makeup trailer and they had a hair trailer. To begin with. Yeah, to begin with. We didn't have anything. No. We were like the, well, the you know ugly stepchild no, of you the... No, we were uh, called? What? HBO referred to, the, referred to us as their little experimental show. Their little experimental Which show. I think and I talk that's about. right. That's yeah. what we were. Yeah. And we, we had none of that. I, right. I even think that was the case for season two. I might be wrong. No, I think it was season it was. three that we got the trailer we all shared. But maybe it was season two. Well, I, I'll, I'm I'll pretty check. sure it was season two. But and but I, I've spoken to Thomas, who was our makeup guy. He, they had no trailer. Right. They it was just like so in a corner been, somewhere. He's been on the show since episode one. Uh, I think he came in a little later, but I'm not sure. Like in that season, he came in season oh. one. But yeah, we would just you know we'd go off in a corner the reason somewhere. I ask and, is because there's very few of us who've been there since the beginning. Right. You know, in terms of the the hour one, myself. Cheryl, Lo- Larry, Laura. Cheryl, Larry, Laura. That's it. Bob Whitey. Bob Whitey. But Bob Whitey is no longer. Right. He does. He directs an occasional right. episode. So yes, he was there at the beginning. Yes, he was there. At he this directed part. this episode actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Season one, yeah. number one. Of course yeah. he did. And um, but I'm just saying in terms of from then to still being on the show full time. Right. So I was not. I was not a contract player. No, I was day paid player. day scale. Yep. Um, I was told I'm in three episodes at that point, yep. and I was happy to, totally happy to do it. But it wasn't anything that we, I ever thought, I'd be sitting here 22 years later and still be doing and still talking about. It was a knockoff. Okay. It was a one off. But here's the thing. I know you felt that way. I. It's very strange for me to watch these because what I remember now is every single detail about what I was thinking, what I had for craft service, every single aspect where I sat while we filmed a certain scene, when we shot that angle, where was I? It all came flooding back to me. And that is uh, really strange. Also, I think the success of our show lies in early on, at least when shows are usually at their best, finding their way the best. But they're really interesting is we didn't, there was no hype early on. That's why first albums of bands are usually so good because they're fighting for their lives. What's going to happen? And we just did what made us laugh. Right. There was no thought. We were working in a vacuum. We had no idea how people were going to react to this at all. And just anecdotally, the, the the first two seasons were really under the radar. Yes. I just noticed the third season, people noticing me on the street and things like that, but well, really well, under well, the which radar. Which season did we start following The Sopranos? Three or four? I don't remember. Well, that's the season 
where we took off. That's right. where season where many new eyes came on us right. off the Sopranos. There was something that I liked about being under the radar. By the way, being under the radar and being employed and making a good living. That's the dream. Yeah. Well, I wasn't making That's a good a living. I was making day skill. Well, by the way, I was barely making <laughs> yeah. a good living. My, so at this point, yeah. only you, Larry, and Cheryl were uh-huh. series regulars. Yes. All right. We're, we're hitting a lot of time here. So let's get to let's get to uh, Louis and But by the way, you said anecdotally. Yeah. Could you promise me that you would use that in talking to me at least a half dozen times a week before I, you I start talking? I promise you. Okay, thanks. That and what was machinations? <laughs> Oh, if you can hand it oh. anecdotally, I have some machinations. So, so I just had this one little scene, and it was really just introducing the character. Yes, and Sammy was a boy at right. this point, uh, who later on I think I made up the name Sammy, so I actually chose oh. well because it could have been either. Right. Um, when the thing with the cuteness uh, that you said, like she's got her arm. Was that a dog you were talking about? No, it was about? another kid. One of there was kid. other women That's there that I were thought. in my mommy oh, and me. So the other kid was one of the other ladies. Correct. Kids. I was very confused. And Larry by that. wouldn't go up and see the kid. Which, by the way, why would he? No, no, forget why would he. Who the hell wants to? If it's my exactly. kid, I barely want to go up, and I love my children. But but seeing them hug but another kid. Your parents kid, got very upset about this. Yes. Well, by the way, let me. Could just go back because it's really important. I want to talk about my parents. So my parents are played by Mina Kolb, who is the most sweet, wonderful woman, but also uh, in the first company of Second City. The and first. Co- very first. And uh, she was kind of an ingenue back then, too. And she played my mother in the movie I did, I Want Someone to Eat Cheese with. Yes. And what a delight. I'll never forget her saying to me, there was a Second City reunion and I'm wearing a red shirt. And she walked to me, you look good in red. <laughs> Red's your color. And since then, I, you think I, ever, I wear red and I don't think of that moment. So was she your idea to play your mother? Uh, or was I'm she sure. casting? Yeah, she was casting. But she was my mom because she told me I look good in red. Okay. Because that's what made her. But she, found- she, was, she did not have a big career here. Um, oh, in, in Hollywood, she worked constantly. She worked, but I'm yeah. just saying she wasn't, you know, Louis Nye was a much better known name, for example. Well, Louis Nye, I want to. Talk about this for a second before I is talk. Is Mina about, still alive? I don't know, and I don't want to check. All right, uh, Louie, I know died for fear in that I'm gonna, yeah. No, no, for fear I'm going to find out on the air. She's yeah. not. She's quite old, though. I yeah. know that. So anyhow, Louis Nye. She was terrific, though. Ah, ah, big ball of wonderful. Louis Nye was a comedy legend and a comedy hero. Right. He's the one who came up with the phrase "Hi Ho, Steve Arino." Uh, uh, well, Steve his Allen Steve show. Allen show was his big. Yes. What but he was after known that, the most for. He, he, he was on the Beverly Hillbillies as a regular. But everything he did was drop down funny on Just all these funny sitcoms man. and movies. The funniest. And played a lot of, uh, you know, like little Lord Fauntleroy well, type that, of character. That was a character on Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. But he was just so damn funny. Now, uh, another health thing for me. I had a stroke. These are, People are going to listen and go, what the fuck? But I had a stroke in... Uh, 99, right? In 99, 2000, you know, 2000 it was. So you had the stroke after the the first hour. Hour. Between that and the I, first the, season. What we call and the, the first special. first season, to me, I remember how difficult it was yeah. to talk. Um, and you were young. Yeah, I was 37 Seven, years old. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in, the, in Cedar sinai they have a channel, which is a gift of Burns and Allen, Jack Benny, all these old time comedies that I love, my heroes. And I'm watching a Jack Benny episode in particular that just killed me. And it took place as an airport and Louis Nye was all through the episode as this cab driver. And he was killing me and killing me. So when we came out, no, I did not suggest Louis Nye. That was not even in my head. They tell me, Louis Nye is here to audition for your father. And I was like, what the fuck? No, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. And he came in and he just destroyed us. Destroyed and he us. was so funny in the op- but he episode. Said, I think the funniest line, it's not even a line, something someone said on the show belongs to Louis Nye in an episode down the road. All right, um, we'll get to it. Yes. Tease but, it. But this one... This you're rotten. One, yeah. It, 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 it's all normal. Larry David is apologizing to my parents. My parents are being kind of tough. It's all right. It's okay. And then Louis throws in at the end. It was rotten. Rotten what you did, but you're apologizing. And the way Louis Nye says rotten, 
is a gift from the gods. That's right. And and that was improvised. Yeah, he, he was know. not given that well, line. Well, by the way, that show at that point was really improvised. Yeah. You know, I, but, but I'm just saying that that that's when you're you when you hire the right people, when you hire a, a comedy brain like that, yeah. you get that kind of gold. Yeah. And he's a big ball of gold. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, where 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 are we at? Well, uh, I mean, the rest is just the stuff at, at the at the restaurant. By the way, more. I love that he's talking about sources for him getting erections. He explained this because this is the scene I want to talk about. Ah, uh, Sophia Cheryl Loren comes back yeah. and she say and she says, "It was she's sticking to it. She she wants it to be clearly yeah. an erection, and she's pissed off. It's not. But Larry says, it didn't happen. Okay, it was if it happened." I would give you credit for it. It didn't happen. I know when I get these things and how they happen. You get these and things? I know these erection things? I know the source. I know, I know the source, yeah, too. I can name sources. Sophia Loren was once a source. I know my sources. Sometimes they're mysterious sources, and I don't know where it comes from. Mysterious sources, which I just thought was the funniest thing for me in the episode. And you know what? We go to the restaurant. This is the last yeah. scene. And when we're ordering at the table... Did you hear what Louie ordered? Fricassee. No. What, what did he order? Fish frenzy. Fish frenzy. Okay, yes. we're all, Fish all frenzy. ordering things from the yes. menu. He decides on the seafood menu he's going to order, Fish which is frenzy. not on the menu. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the, the fish frenzy. What's that? Where do you see that? Uh, right here. And it's got uh, bruised shrimp with it, and. Well, and the way he says it is too fucking funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he was. A, I enjoyed working with him also. Larry had come to my office and said, hey, you know, the Hitler thing, uh, you, uh, Cheryl heard you on the message say you were sorry. So what you're going to apologize for, and the whole episode, really, the theme was apology, letters of apology. Non-stop apology. Non -stop apologizing. So he told me, if she wants to know why you're apologizing, uh, and I was writing a letter to Kathy Griffin apologizing, right. I don't, you know. And that Kathy called you about working with me, at, with Larry, and um, you didn't give him the message. So I said it was I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, of course, Larry's Kathy got it Griffin all working. Shows up. She, she, <laughs> she walks up uh, to the table and I see her and she says hello to me. And I do a thing I've done on the show many times. And that was the first time, which is the hey, 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 which is hey. Hey, hey, in other words, oh, fuck, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. And Larry does it. We're both looking at each other. How do we take this? What do we do? And we even continue lying to her going, what are you talking about? And and, and that sets up, in my mind, and, and uh, it sets up a dynamic, which is that with you and Larry and Cheryl and me, that you are constantly Digging deeper holes with us, and we always know. We always catch you. And there's no lesson learned. You never learn. By the way, if there's a lesson learned, there's no it's show. It's not comedy. There are and no lessons learned. And you just keep on no doing the no same learned. thing over and over again. By the way, I want to end this with, again, Louis Nye. The waitress walks away. And he goes, look at the way that girl walks. I know. He was a little <laughs> dirty old man no, thing going way, on. My grandfather was that way. I hated uh -huh. my grandfather talked to everyone and flirted yeah. with every waitress. And I couldn't understand why when I was a kid it made me uncomfortable, but my instincts was, were right. Were correct. Yeah. 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 I, I have that note, Louis Nye, dirty old man. Yeah. So <laughs> so on that note We're gonna we're gonna end this this episode and yeah. more to come. And I hope look, I hope it's enjoyable for you. If it's not, don't listen to the episode. Is that asking too it is asking too much, but we'll see you next time. All right. Bye.